Welcome to yet another episode of True North. Today we are joined by Alok Bajpai, the CEO and co-founder of Ixigo. Thanks Alok for joining us. Uh, to begin with, really tell us, did entrepreneurship happen as planned or was it a chance? Oh, I think it was a chance. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody ever plans for entrepreneurship. Uh, I mean, we always dream of starting up one day, but uh, it so happened that uh, when I finished my business school, uh, I was evaluating various options and uh, one of the options uh, that I thought about was to move back to India and do something of my own. And uh, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, it actually took one year from that day uh, till the day when I actually started. Uh, but uh, the situation or the, uh, you know, the fact that A, I didn't have a job that I really uh, wanted uh, and B, the fact that, uh, you know, when I looked at India as a market, it looked very exciting to be back here because uh, I had worked abroad for about five years and uh, I thought it was my calling at that time to move back here. Uh, had spent most of my, uh, ex you know, working days in Amadeus, which is a travel technology company and I said, uh, maybe I need to go back to India, do something in the travel industry. Uh, so that's how it all got started. Uh, it was more coincidences than uh, actually a plan. You also have a co-founder who is also your friend. So tell us, does having a co-founder in this journey really help? Oh, absolutely. So uh, Rajneesh and I go back to uh, the IIT days where we studied together. So we've known each other for uh, more than 20 years now, 21 to be precise. Um, and uh, having a co-founder whom you, uh, you know, know inside out and have uh, almost grown up with is uh, is definitely a boon because uh, whenever you are uh, in times where you need a uh, you know either a shoulder to cry on or uh, uh, someone to bounce off an idea with uh, you know you can do it without the fear of being judged about it uh, you can also have a very complementary mix of skills uh, when you have a co-founder because I don't think one person has innately all the talents required to succeed. Uh, so in our case, you know, Rajneesh is the person who takes care of uh, product tech, uh, some parts of growth, uh, whereas I am looking more at the business uh, marketing strategy. Uh, so I think that complements, uh, you know, the uh, skill sets that are required. Uh, so I, I think it's a great asset to have a friend who's also your co-founder. Tell us about the journey from then to now. You know, when we started back in uh, 2007, uh, these were days of the desktop internet and uh, the pain area that we were out there to solve was that a lot of people would go to travel websites, search for, let's say, an airline fare, uh, and then go to another travel website, do the same search. So you'd have like five browser windows open, uh, doing the same search over and over again. Um, you know, and, and we figured out that it's so simple to just create an aggregator that can do that for you. You know, why has nobody done that yet? And uh, uh, when we looked at the Indian market where a lot of new OTAs had come in, there was Make My Trip and a uh, few others uh, that had gotten started. And we said, look, there'll be enough inventory to aggregate here, right from the airlines as well as the OTAs. And then, uh, you know, consumers can come and search, compare, and book what they want. So that was the thesis which got us started. Uh, the journey has been, you know, a very eventful one over the last decade. Uh, so it's been more than a decade actually. We'll celebrate our 11th uh, anniversary uh, in a few days. Wow. Uh, so I think uh, the biggest take of the entire journey is that, uh, you know, there'll always be moments where uh, things go as per plan and there'll be always moments where things don't go as per plan and there'll probably be more of the latter yeah. um, and you've got to always keep believing in your vision and executing to the maximum possible under the circumstances that you are in uh, without being uh, I think obsessed about uh, having everything perfect and your way because things always uh, have a way of their own you know they do not go as per plan and I think important thing is to have a plan B or have a preparedness for what if things didn't go as per plan and, and, and just keep executing. What are some of the challenges of scaling up? I think the number one challenge uh, is always finding good people. 
uh, in making sure that you're building a team which has the right attitude. Uh, it's not just about skills, it's actually about, uh, you know, an attitude uh, that uh, basically has people that don't give up easily, uh, that can, uh, you know, think outside the box, uh, who are humble enough to uh, accept failure and to say that they were wrong. Uh, so we look for these things when we hire people. And uh, I think by building that uh, right set of uh, individuals uh, into your team, you know, the culture automatically gets sorted because you're bringing in people who will uh, do the right things, you know, when it's required and, and uh, who will not give up easily, who will keep on uh, improving not just the organization's capabilities, but also uh, their own and therefore uh, help you scale as you grow because you know, organization scale when the people inside the organization scale. Mm. Uh, and that means you're always on that path of relearning. Mm. Uh, because in today's world, whether it's technology, marketing or product, nothing remains constant. Uh, things completely change within a matter of months. What's your true north? So my true north is actually, uh, you know, thinking about what is the greater good we are doing, uh, you know, as a company, myself as an individual by doing what I do every day. Mm. So when I think of uh, what makes me come to office every day, it's actually the, uh, you know, life changing uh, impact that some of our apps are having. Uh, give you an example, we have a very successful app for trains, Exigo trains, right? Uh, millions of users every day are able to find the right and most accurate running status of a train as well as the most accurate uh, knowledge of whether they will be actually traveling on that train or not because whether their PNR will confirm or not. Uh, and that small moment which might seem like a very trivial feature uh, is actually a moment of delight for that user, right? Um, and uh, I think we've got tons of feedback from people who say that, you know, thanks to your app, you know, I was able to get the right sort of information at the right time. Um, and it's uh, changing their life in a meaningful way. How do you unwind, Alok? By spending time with my little ones. I have two kids, uh, one five-year-old and a three-year-old. and. I head back home, uh, you know, I play with them, read them bedtime stories. Uh, that's the best way to unwind. Do you have a fear? You know, I'm fearful of the, the future uh, where AI becomes, uh, you know, the thing that runs almost everything out there. And then you're like, what would human beings be doing? I wonder about that a lot. If not an entrepreneur, what would Alok be? An archaeologist. What does success mean to you? coming to work every day with a certain level of energy uh, and being equally excited when you head back home in the evening. One word that defines you. I think I would say pragmatic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure talking to you, Alu. Good talking to you as well. Thank you for having me here.